Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads present transcribed Lawrence and Lee's musical play, Starlight. Starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another delightful musical is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight, Dorothy Warren Scholl and I are bringing you a memory of the days of good old vaudeville. Dorothy is Helen Harris, and I'm a singing hooker named Harry McKay. And here is Starlight. Do you remember, Miss Harris? Absolutely, Mr. McKay. Remember how they did it at the palace When you and I were new and you were day You saw the greatest troopers in the USA Unless the ladies half was in the way Hey, hey! Now all the guys are gathered at the palace And all the gals were glamorous and gay We always had a picnic at the palace Before the movies were to a day McKay? Uh, yes, yes, Miss Harris. Were there any big people born in your hometown? <laughs> no big people, only babies. <laughs> Hello, girl. Dance it, Helen. Now for the trick turn. Good girl. I, uh, I think we better stop, Miss Harris. I'm a little stiff from dancing. I don't care where you're from. Keep going. <laughs> Remember how they did it at the palace. The music used to give you such a thrill. They hung a little sign so every Jack and Jill could recognize the people on the bill. Yes, sir. Now everybody took a second on board. And even then you never got your fill. Remember how they did it. In the old and golden days of Vaudeville. Well, baby, we finally played the palace. Oh, brother, we're in the big time. Mm, yes, Harry. Yes, Harry, what's the matter with you, baby? What are you so gum about? What more could a couple of hoofers ask for, huh? Nothing, Harry. It's all I ever wanted. Say, uh, put your right arm out a little more as we make the trick turn, will you, honey? That always gets it. Anything you say, Harry. Here's my cue. Grab my arm, baby. Here we go. When you wore a tulip, a sweet yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose, on the turn when you caress me for then heaven bless me what a blessing no one knows you made life cheery when you call me dearie was down where the blue grass grows good girl your lips were sweeter than julep when you wore that tulip and i wore a big red I've got to tell you. Later, honey, later. We've got to do an encore. Come on, now. side step back. Huh? Ready? I guess so, Harry. And uh, smile, will you, honey? This is a happy number. That's it. What would you say if I asked you to wait another year? Oh, don't. 
don't fear. No, I won't fear. My heart's jumping up and down. Oh, you silly little dog. <laughs> what would you say if I should run away, away from you? Oh, don't fear. No, I won't fear. Love is for a spell, so for a spell. Spell a little love for me. To be you, I you'll see a nice little H O U S C. We'll have a B A B Y four and a G I R L two. When I'm M A double R I E D two Y O U. Well, sir, baby, the act's never been better than it was tonight. Oh, you're a great showman, Harry. Oh, no, no, no. We're a great team, Helen. Hey, uh, you started to tell me something during the act. What was it? Harry. Oh, Harry, I don't know how to say it. Oh, come on, come on, kid. Talk it out. What's bothering you? Harry, I want to quit the act. Quit? Quit right when we're hitting the top? Oh, can you think of a better time? But why, baby? Why? You gotta have a reason. I want to get married. Married? Huh. I didn't even know you were in love with anybody. I have been for a long time. Well, uh, who's the lucky guy? Somebody been hanging around a stage door, sending you flowers and candy and all that stuff, huh? <laughs> no. No, this, this character never sent me a thing. But I'm in love with him. I have been for years and years. And I have a feeling I will be for the rest of my life. Well, who is he? Who are you, you silly baboon? Who? <laughs> me? Oh, honey, why don't you say something before? Oh, gosh, it's the fellow's place to do the asking. But you were always so busy figuring how we'd get out of playing Percocy, Pennsylvania, and Mound City, South Dakota, that you never thought of me. Oh, gee whiz. Why, it's perfect. We'll never have to break up the team. Wait a minute. What would we call ourselves? The McKays? Oh, that's no good. They'd never know who gets the top billing. Harry... When we get married, I want to give up show business. Settle down and, and make a home for us. We won't have to live out of theater trunks and paper suitcases. Wait a minute now, honey. W what about the act? Oh, you'll be great as a single, Harry. And you always had a hankering to go on and knock them dead, all by yourself. Well, I'm not saying I couldn't do it. Sure you can. Harry McKay, headline. <laughs> Oh, gee, gee, honey, it's great of you to meet me at the station. A uh, quarter to three in the morning, oh, too. I wouldn't miss it. How's it going? Mm, not bad. Harrisburg was a little slow. I, I caught the first train after I got off. And next week, Arthur booked me right back here. Oh, honey, the palace. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, no, no, it's, it's Newark. But it's right across the river. Oh, Harry, something's wrong. Yeah. There was 20 people in the house tonight. Oh, it's not you, Harry. The whole vaudeville business is kind of shaky. Well, don't you worry about it. You know where I want to go, Harry? Over to Broadway. I just want to walk. Walk? What, at this time of the morning? Sure. Grab my arm, partner, just like in the act. Okay. okay. <laughs> Broadway. Look at it. Yeah. Come here. Well, where are you taking me? To my favorite spot in New York. The place I used to come to whenever I had the blues, Harry. Blues? I never knew you were ever sad, Helen. All the time, mister. Till I married you. Right turn. Well, what do you know? Schubert Alley. You know, there's, there's an old saying that if Broadway has a heart, call it sits somewhere under this pavement. Look at all the posters, honey. All the three sheets. Oh, brother, these, these are the greats. I don't know why, Harry, but late at night and early in the morning, these posters almost seem to come alive. Look. 
Warren Ziegfeld presents Miss Marilyn Miller and Sonny by Jerome Kern, Otto Harbach, and Oscar Hammerstein II. With Jack Donahue, Cliff Edwards, Cliff and Webb. Oh, golly. Here's the poster for the Winter Garden Show. Sort of makes you feel like getting down on one knee, doesn't it, honey? Morning, Jolie. Swanee, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swanee. The folks up north will see me no more when I go to the Swanee Shore. Oh, look at this one. You know... I guess if I had my choice of being anybody else in the world, it'd be Faith Templeton. For it is Mary, Mary, plain as any name can be. Of course, uh, you know, you'd have a pretty tough choice choosing between her and, and her. The Follies present... Oh, my man, I love you so Here, Helen. Here's who I'd be. Mr. Show Business himself. My regards to Paul Remember me to Hello Square. George M. Cohan. Ah, what a guy. Tell all the gang at 42nd Street that I will soon be there. Makes you feel like the whole street is singing. Oh. How I to mingle with the old time throng. Oh, give my regards to old Broadway and say that I. You brought me here to give me a shot in the arm. But you don't have to tell me. Show business ain't never gonna die. Operator! Operator! Are you ready with my long distance call to New York? Hello? Morning, Helen. It's it's me, Harry. Oh, Harry. Where are you calling from? Perkesy, Pennsylvania. Arthur booked me here. Oh, Harry. Oh, no, no, it ain't bad, honey. I'm just breaking in the new act. Oh, Harry, don't be discouraged. Where are you booked after that? Mm, well, uh, Tell me, Harry. Valeria, Ohio next week. Waterloo, Indiana, then Mound City, South Dakota. Oh, honey, listen to me. Everybody's talking about what a big thing radio's going to be. Huh? You know, Harry, wireless. You know, with, with earphones. Oh, no. You're kidding, Helen. It's a fad, baby, a plaything. Why, the whole thing will blow over in three months. Oh, you'd be great on it, Harry. They're looking for talent. Helen, honey, remember the old saying? One picture is worth a thousand words? Well, on that, that wireless thingamajig, they'd only be getting one thousandth of me. Why, nobody'd see my famous trick turn. But you got to keep up with the times, Harry. Oh, no, 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 honey. Radio will never last. Boy, everybody says it's bad for the ears. Helen, what I really called up about was to tell you that I love you. Even in Perkesy, Pennsylvania, I love you. Oh, Harry. My wonderful one, whenever I'm dreaming, love's love light a gleaming I see. Well, I... I... Gotta say goodbye now, honey. Oh, goodbye, Harry. Bye. Happy Perkesy. Happy Illyria. Happy Mount City, South Dakota. Oh, I, I gotta do something. What am I gonna do? Hey. Hey, I wrote that number down someplace. Yeah, here it is. Hello, operator. Give me circle 7200. May I speak to the man in charge of new talent, please? The who? The program director? Yeah, I guess he'll do. This is Helen. I, I mean, uh, this is this is Miss Ruth DeLille. The um, uh, well, well, you can call me the Sunshine Girl. Turn to the 
second act of Starlight in just a moment. Right now, in a vast city of tents sprawling over 3,000 acres of the Irvine Ranch in Santa Ana, California, some 50,000 Boy Scouts are having the time of their young lives to keep them well and properly fed. All in all, more than 1,300 coach and sleeping kitchen and dining cars were assembled for the run into Santa Ana, a trip that comes during the period of peak vacation travel at a time when railroad passenger facilities are most in demand. What's more, the railroads adjusted their schedules to give the scouts a maximum of sightseeing along the way and to provide for different routes going and returning. And all this is provided at a very considerable reduction in rates so that as many scouts as possible could get in on the fun. For their part, the railroads, the only form of transportation, with the equipment, manpower, and know-how to handle a transportation job of this magnitude, are delighted to be able to play a helpful role in the success of the Jamboree. Like the scouting movement itself, the railroads in their own way are working continually to help build a better, stronger America. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee play with music, Starlight, starring Gordon McRae as Harry McKay and Dorothy Warrenshold as Helen. <laughs> Dear Helen, just a line to let you know that I'm killing them in Kalamazoo. All my love, Harry. Now everybody took the second encore, and even then you never got your kiss. Dear Helen, I'm going to have to go to the hospital. Dear Helen, business is boff in Butte, Montana. In the old golden days, I bought a beer. Ready to go on for your number, Mr. McKay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how's the house, Mac? One old lady with an ear trumpet, a bum fast asleep and snoring, and 12 large spiders. <laughs> well, you can't always play to packed houses. Stand aside, Buster. I'm going to give that old lady a good time, wake up the bum, and give those spiders the show of their life. Everybody loves a baby, that's why I'm in love with you. Pretty baby, and I'd like to be your sister, brother, dad, and mother too. Pretty baby, yes, sir, pretty baby. Won't you come and let me rock you in my cradle of love, and we'll cuddle all the time. Oh, I want a loving baby, and it might as well be you. Pretty baby of mine. Well, the old lady liked me. <laughs> Hey, Mac, did you see her face light up when I did the trick turn, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, our closing act tonight is the closing act of our vaudeville policy here in Sedalia, Missouri's finest theater. Next week, Hola Negri in Passion. <laughs> and now, Harry McKay. Well, all I gotta say is, Polo Negri's gonna have a tough act to follow. Somebody loves me. I wonder who. I wonder who she can be. Somebody loves me. Oh, gee, I wish I knew. Who can she be worries me For every girl who passes me I shout, hey there, baby You were meant to be my loving baby Somebody loves me I wonder who Dressing room keys. Don't know what we're going to use them for. We're leaving. Hey, uh, what you got there, Pop? A gramophone? It's an 
awful looking funny horn for a gramophone. No, Mr. McKay, this here's one of them newfangled radios. Oh? What happened to the cat's whisker and the earphones, huh? Oh, they got this here perfected. Super heterodyne, something like that. Works off an A and B batteries. On clear nights, I can get as far as KDK, Pittsburgh, and KFI in Los Angeles. Guess what this here is right now? I can't imagine. New York City. Never thought I'd live to see the day. Ain't even got a wire hookup, no place. And now the sunshine girl, Ruth Dillio. Whispering while you cut on it. Hey, uh, I thought this gadget didn't give out anything but weather reports and setting up exercise. Oh, they're beginning to send out pretty things. Like this here, Ruth the Leal. Pretty? Brother, that's beautiful. Mr. You demonstrate radio sets here? Yes, sir. Here's the latest model. Works off the storage battery, mind you. And it picks up Schenectady as clear as my wife talking to me. Well, I uh, happen to notice it's just time for a certain program coming from New York. I bet you can't pick up WEAF in that set. Can so and clear as crystal. This set's dirt cheap, too, mister. I love you in the morning. And I love him at night. I love him, yes, I love him when the stars are shining bright. I love him in the springtime and I love him in the fall. But last night on the back porch, I love him best of all. And that's all for tonight from your sunshine girl, yours truly, Ruth DeLille. Now, That's all I wanted to hear. I, Jones, I guess I was a little late. Uh, don't you want to buy the set, mister? No, no, but for the first time in my life, I'm going to write somebody a fan letter. Here's your fan mail for today, Mr. Leal. Big stack again. Oh, that's wonderful. My goodness, there's a letter from Florida. And one from Maine, and, and one from... Oh, golly. One with a familiar handwriting. My dear Mr. Leal, once in a lifetime a man hears a voice like yours. Keep singing. Sincerely, Harry McKay. Oh, my goodness. My dear Mr. McKay... It is strange that you should write to me, for I have long been a fan of yours. When you were playing the palace with that strikingly beautiful partner of yours, I never missed a single performance. When you get back to New York, why don't you drop in at the station to see me? A man of your talents belongs in this exciting new medium. Excuse the typing, warmest regards, Ruth DeLille. Well, what do you know? Dear Mr. Leal, I am coming to New York in a few days, and I appreciate your offer, but I must tell you in all frankness that I am not a headliner anymore. I, I am strictly playing the sticks. Oh, oh Harry. Mr. McKay? Yeah? Mr. Leal will see you now. She has a couple of minutes before she goes on the air. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. In, in here? Uh, Studio A. Uh, Mr. Lil, I, I... 
Helen. Oh, Harry, you're not mad at me. Mad? Oh, no, honey, I... I had to do something. Oh, Harry. I should have known that voice couldn't belong to just anybody. You know what radio needs, Harry? A team. A husband and wife. Well, because Harry... Well, most of the married people listening are husbands and wives. <laughs> oh, honey, you're as crazy as you always were. And I always knew you had big time blood in your veins. Oh, but we got to do it together, Harry. Oh, no, no, Helen. I, I, I'm a sight act. You know, people got to see me take that turn, you know, that trick turn. Oh, Harry, keep doing it on radio. Every time you do a number that calls for it. Why? Well, maybe someday they'll be seeing us, too. We got to be ready. You're on the air in ten seconds, Mr. Leo. Come here, Harry. Sit alongside me on the piano bench. Well, if you say so, honey. Good evening, radio fans. This is Ruth DeLille, or it, it was Ruth DeLille, because tonight I'm going to tell you my real name. It's Helen Harris, Mrs. Harry McKay. And from now on, you'll be hearing the team of McKay and Harris. Here we go, Mr. McKay. I'm right alongside of you, Miss Harris. Just you, only you, in the shadowy twilight, in silvery moonlight, there's no you. Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our hearty thanks to Benny Rubin, Tyler McVeigh, and our entire company. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Here's an idea that allows you to combine all the advantages of railroad and automobile travel, whether for your vacation or for business. For through the Rail Auto Service Plan, you can enjoy the speed, comfort, and dependability of train travel for long distances. Then, at your destination, you can step off your train into an automobile for local sightseeing or business calls. Yes, through the Rail Auto Travel Plan, available in some 400 towns and cities, you can arrange at the time you buy your train ticket to have a car reserved at your destination, adding extra convenience and comfort to your trip. Thank you, Marvin. Well, Dorothy, you made a wonderful vaudeville partner. What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Uh, you just listen. <laughs> That sounds like a love story. Oh, you're so right. One of the richest adventures of all time, Dorothy. The colorful romance of Max Million and Carlotta. And it's called The Golden Empress. Well, I'll just bring my tiara and see you next week, Gordon. Good night. Good night, Dorothy. You were real big time tonight. All aboard. Well, folks, it looks as if we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and the world premiere of The Golden Empress, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> transcribed in Hollywood. Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers' The Desert Song in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Wilma Spence on NBC.